You are watching KUTV Primetime News with Omondi Otieno. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on KUTV Primetime News. You can share thoughts with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, KUTV Kenya and on Twitter, KUTV underscore Kenya. Safety precautions are incredibly important and uh, should always be given the top priority by everyone at their workplaces. The Ministry of Labour is mandated to ensure compliance with the provisions of the Occupational Safety and Health Act of 2007 and promote safety and health of the workers. To help improve safety knowledge today, we are joined by uh, engineer Victor Mundi, who is specialising in work at height safety. So, Victor... Thank you so much for dedicating your time for this discussion. You may introduce yourself to our viewers. They get to know who Victor is. Okay, cool. Um, my name is Victor Okello, um, certified working at height trainer. Um, I'm a facilitator and assessor. All right. Yes. So um, right to the discussion. So bring us to speed with uh, occupational safety. What does it entail? Okay, occupational health and safety is, uh, primarily focuses on uh, uh, protecting employees, yeah, um, protecting employees in their workplaces. Um, that's from uh, any injuries mm -hmm. or harmful hazards here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nice. Now, uh, narrowing down to your field of uh, specialization, work at height. Tell us about it. What is it, and uh, generally, what do you do? What does it entail as well? Okay, working at height basically is uh, this a uh, technicians working in full risk um, um, positions. These are a certain distance that when um, a worker falls from that distance, it may lead to personal injuries. So we term it as working at height. It's very wide. Ah, all right. Yeah. Nice. So uh, maybe as a country, where are we with the policies that pertain to uh, the work at height and safety? Okay, cool. Um, if I look at uh, Occupational Health and Safety Act 2007, mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that clearly um, uh, regulations or policies that directly talks about working at height. So we depend as a country on OSH Act to define for us what working at height is. In some way, if I look at policies in other countries like South Africa, I like reading policies of other countries mm -hmm. in terms of like occupational health and safety from other companies like in South Africa. If you look at construction regulation 10, it talks about fall protection plans. So we have for, um, uh, construction regulation 10 to A, B, CD. We have got five parts under fall protection plan. So clearly defines what need or what is expected as a worker working at height. But um, in our country, we think we reach there. All right. Yeah. Now, um, maybe I would rather ask, uh, now that you find there is a gap uh, in terms of policy making for for the safety of people working at height, are there? Are you probably making moves to for the government to address this issue or something? Yeah, they have, uh, if you look at, for example, occupational safety um, part number seven, uh, we have got section 63, 64, and 65. Mm -hmm. They have clearly defined about, uh, talk about machineries, lifting, and chain, and ropes, about generally lifting and inspection of these equipments. Mm -hmm. Because uh, workers working at height, they must be fully equipped on how to do these inspections. Mm -hmm. So they have just stated what how the inspection should be done, the criteria, what need to be done. Mm -hmm. But they've not clearly stated it, um, uh, what need, uh, I mean, the working at it directly, what need to be put in place. That's why I just said earlier, we depend on our, sh um, our shark maybe from different countries defining for us All right. what it entails. Nice. Now, um, still on working at height, um, what are the relevant skills required and uh, probably you could also enlighten us where can one get uh, to learn these skills uh, to get into the field okay cool uh, just as i said working at is very wide mm -hmm. um any worker who is working at it basically we have um, to reach a certain distance you said they're using um, a portable or a fixed structure mm -hmm. you need several courses like the basic working at height course, we call it for um, um, uh, fall arrest. Mm -hmm. Fall arrest is a basic minimum course for any worker working at height, you know. So you can access uh, a certain fall distance, either use of ladder, you can use pole climbing, for example, those guys who does the work, I mean, um, 
internet connectivity uh, on the post because we have some other contractors or maybe uh, service producers that run their uh, internet cables on electricity poles, you know. And these electricity poles are on live, you know. Kenya, for example, in our country, Kenya is not going to switch off the uh, uh, the power lines for you to put on your uh, cables, you know. So you have to specialize or tailor these courses to suit uh, no, uh, the client's needs. So mm -hmm. we train pole climbing for um, working cross proximity to power lines. For those who work on maybe on a fixed structure like um, a tower, we also train them on followers and basic rescue. So in case of all this person is competent to be able to um, perform a rescue or rescue his fellow uh, safely onto the ground. So we also have the guys who work on um, a tall building, the skyscrapers, you know, the window cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a rope access. A rope access is also very uh, advanced, working at uh, advanced course. We have rope access level one, level two, level three. You see hiring winch and crane mm -hmm. is very expensive. So we have got um, some other trainings which may cut cost to uh, maybe an employer or an organization. So uh, maybe you want to access the rooftop um, uh, sites. We have rooftop solutions. So we tailor the courses according to the clients' mm -hmm. uh, projects or work they do. Right. Yeah. Now, um, talking about uh, working at height and uh, probably um, the health and safety um, uh, you know, these uh, teachings, these uh, certifications, because someone may be interested in probably pursuing a career in working at height and probably any other safety and uh, health, uh, you know, certification. So where, are, where can these people get, uh, you know, these organizations that offer these services? Um. I just saw that, as I said personally, I work for a company called Gravity Group Holdings. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, Gravity Group is a South Africa based company. We are leading um, 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 commercial working at a tight industry provider. We provide pro training provider. Mm -hmm. We have got roots in Africa, in Europe, and uh, Middle East, and also in Asia. Mm -hmm. So, we, our mandate is to uh, release competent technicians and engineers to work at height. So like if you look at in organizations, it's always we recommend that an organization must have at least one year inspector. You see that's um, one of the course which is very important because this is a certified individual mm -hmm. who is able to do an inspection of the equipment and certify this equipment these guys use and be able to advise the company uh, on the requirements, the date of its update, all the standards, you know. Mm -hmm. Then we also need, if any worker working at height, you need to at least train your workers, um, um, equip them so that they are competent enough to be able to work safely at working at height. So generally, it's a wide career that I will really, really encourage people to explore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, a lot of um, opportunities in it because each and every company must have a gear inspector, must have an advisor, you know, is advising about the standard, the trends in the market, what needs to be uh, in place in terms of health and safety. Yeah. All right. Now, um, Vic, I would want us, uh, I would want you to talk about uh, what the workers uh, who are working at height and uh, probably other safety equipments, operating bigger safety equipments, what do they really need to know? Because uh, in your organization, you are championing for uh, for uh, zero or current I risk incidences, what should they really know at their workplaces? So, um, uh, like in organization, we usually talk about a fall protection plan. You know, fall protection plan has got five parts. You know, the first part, a fall protection plan developer in an organization should be able to um, uh, understand what's risk assessment. Mm -hmm. We talk about medical fitness for the employees. We talk about the trainings program. This person is able to understand which courses suits these employees yeah mm -hmm. we also talk about the gear inspection so employees they also must understand which what are the criteria for inspection what do i need to check on my equipment because you find for example those who work on telecommunication sectors the guys hosting and antennas mm -hmm. you must also need to know uh, the limit of the equipment they are using the breaking strength of it because we cannot go into calculation of the breaking strength of the equipment because given for the manufacturer you know you need to understand the safe working laws the, the maximum weight that equipment can hold before it breaks because you need to understand what are the weight of the equipment am i lifting you know if i'm lifting 
lifting maybe from 0 to 40 kilogram we normally teach a course um, uh, we have a lifting course we train the guys how to put up the pulley system one to one pulley system three to one pulley system if you're lifting uh, a load between 40 kilogram to 100 kilogram if you're lifting above 100 kilogram then you need to uh, uh, mechanical lifting so um, uh, these uh, employees or technicians or the engineers they are well uh, equipped on um, which pulley system so which lifting uh, tactics they need to use to lift a certain e um, weight of this equipment so then lastly rescue so they're also equipped on performing uh, rescuers on um, the other part in case of any injury so yeah it's always around right yeah training now uh, victor uh, talking about uh, work at height and probably we could also um, uh, give it a wider angle you've been to latest you've been to the the project we are having a safari partnership with the government of ethiopia to provide for them uh, uh, you know a service delivery on the telecommunication sector so probably what are some of the opportunities available for someone who might be interested in uh, pursuing a career in working at height and uh, probably with your experience having been to ethiopia what are some of the opportunities that uh, probably kenyans need to to to, to you know to look at for uh, on this Okay. Um, working at height, just like any other careers, you know, it depends with the, the passion, whatever. Normally, I say, when whatever you do, you're giving it your best, you know. So just like in uh, working at height, if you have inter if you are interested in working at height, like um, if you're working generally in occupational health and safety, working at height is just part in occup occupational health and safety. Though working at height is also an, a very wide, um, a very wide sector if we look at it, you know. So. Uh, up in, in Ethiopia, what we basically do, we equipping contractors, we releasing uh, competent technicians. Yeah, before the project starts, the before the project starts, the very first basic foundations is uh, occupational health and safety. So these employees need to be equipped. They need to be trained, relevance trainings. We need to have um, medical uh, certifications examined for this employee. They must be medically fit, you know. Uh, we have guys who need to be doing all these things. Mm -hmm. And someone can say, okay, cool, we need gear inspectors. These equipments must be inspected before any work start to just certified, to just ensure they are, uh, they are up to standard, you know. So someone must be also be there to give these advices, you know. They must also understand this certification number, the international certification of this equipment, because you invite someone goes to the market, you just buy any equipment because you want to have the work done, you know, so there must be somebody who is advising which type of which standard is required for maybe this kind of work, you know, for example, for someone working in the telecommunication sector, maybe someone climbing um, a tower, or guide tower or wherever, you know, you need um, a full body harness. A full body harness has got three EN standards. So we talk about EN361, Ostrock EN813. So if we don't tell this person, you know, the type of harness you need is EN3, you will not understand. You go to the market and buy any type of equipment you get. Then also you need to tell them the work positioning belt. You need to, this is the work positioning belt. This is how we use it. And this is the certification number we need for such work positioning belt, you know, because they also have got safe working load. They have been certified, tested, you know, they have the weight they must carry. Maybe the maximum number of weight someone can use there. This, uh, that type of equipment. So we have these guys who need to do this advice for this kind of uh, um, uh, understanding of the employees or purchases of these equipments on behalf of these companies. You know, for uh, also they also need to know the um, at how at which stage these equipments expires. Because I know the working at at, at industries um, equipments they are divided into maybe softwares and hardware equipment. So the software equipments. They expires after every 10 years, whether you are using it or you're not using it. Mm -hmm. The maximum um, lifespan is 10 years. So if you, if we have someone in the company who keep a check or track of this um, um, expiry of this equipment, then we will have totally zero uh, harm or zero incidence of this um, to our, our cars. So there's a lot of opportunity. Maybe the contractors, they must have somebody in the, uh, in the company to run all these processes for them. Because like, as I just told you, Gravity, um, Gravity uh, Training Company, they certify. Mm -hmm. They give their training. Then they tell you what you need to do. 
right. you know then now it's a work of the contractor to ensure whatever was done or whatever they were taught is implemented as per the standard or as per our SOPs right now Vic I would wish that uh, we divert our attention from probably working at height and uh, talk about uh, the fact that uh, you've been to Ethiopia you've seen uh, the project from right from where they started and uh, probably uh, the level where it is right now if not for the conflict that uh, we've seen in Ethiopia what have uh, some what are some of uh, the opportunities you've seen that uh, probably our Kenyan youth uh, could you know consider to you know find probably greener pastures on the other side <laughs> okay that is a tricky question but honestly um uh, from the countries i've gone to mm -hmm. um i would really appreciate the the step we've taken as a country mm -hmm. yeah that one i will really really uh, uh, congratulate uh, the government policies because if you go outside the country whatever if i do i, I don't really like doing comparison what's happening in my country and what's mm -hmm. happening in our country you know but what i can ascertain uh, the currently what's going on the project which is running in ethiopia our kenyan people are really doing so well mm -hmm. yeah i'm always very proud when i'm I'm working and someone asking you from Kenya like the respect you get right and that tells you the skills we get we take our people to empower those guys from those countries like mm -hmm. the, these projects they cannot work them they cannot do them alone mm -hmm. we have a lot of Kenyans there we need these people get empowered before they start running these projects alone so I'm very happy that um, our Kenyans contractor speaks our guys there to go and do the empowering you know the empowering process I mean uh, sessions to those countries like in Ethiopia so uh, basically uh, actually when the countries uh, companies within Ethiopia mm -hmm. uh, they also come they ask us you know what do you have someone in Kenya who can do for me one two three for someone to ask you such a question it mm -hmm. means he has like he has looked someone around but he did not get that person right. so he believes in Kenya's guy that this skills is in Kenya and I can get it in Kenya right and that is a very very um, a green light that is a very very good sign mm -hmm. that we have a lot of opportunities there all right yeah so as long as you are have integrity in what you do mm. as long as you determine and hard work so that whatever you're doing the outcome is be, uh, can be seen by people then i think right we have right people here in kenya who can do that <laughs> very nice uh in case you've spoken so well of uh, you know the kind of uh, the kind of knowledge and uh, expertise we are having as Kenyans. Now, uh, probably as we wind up this discussion, I'd also want to leverage on uh, how you've uh, traversed the continent. You've been to South Africa, you've also been to Ethiopia, and probably to Tanzania as well. So I'd wish that uh, as we wind up this, you give a word of advice to the youth and uh, general public on uh, what they need to know in matters pertaining to health and safety and uh, probably what are some of the projections you are seeing on this career field and what do they uh, what should they prioritize in the near future skills that they need really to have that comes in andy in the near future okay cool so what i would advise um the our current young generations the moment you finish from university one thing because we normally have a lot of internship opportunities, but um, very few will um, tell you we are paying you. And the mentality we have normally as youth, someone finishes the university and is like, no, boom, I want to be paid this account of, amount of money. So you'll keep on jumping from this organization, jumping from this organization. So you're not giving it your all. So what I would advise for someone from maybe you just finished the university, the very first point you've tried, you've gotten an opportunity, whether it's paying or not you give it your best give it your best shot everyone people there are a lot of people seeing what you're doing yeah even if it's not your employer but there are a lot of people outside there who are seeing whatever you're doing and basically you're not going to stay there for long you're gonna um, uh, um, you're gonna get a, first of all get that experience first then from there uh, you'd be able to sell yourselves because you got the vast experience you wanted that if you start looking at you know, in terms of money uh, money uh, direction i think you're gonna lose that focus into your careers you know you're not going to give your career the best 
So what I will advise um, our current generation, um, when you get an opportunity, whether you've been paying 10,000 or 30,000 or even free, first of all, ensure you are subject matter expert in whatever opportunity you've gotten so that next time you're able to sell your services, you know, yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much, uh, Vic, for that insightful information. And I uh, really wish that uh, probably we organize another time you come and talk about this as uh, probably when you resume the project in uh, Ethiopia exactly. and many other, you know, fields that you people explore on the other side. Yeah. So I really appreciate uh, your time for this discussion. Yeah, that's, um, yeah thank you so much for, uh, for your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, we can always have discussions also a lot um, outside here. We have, I can give you maybe um, our contacts or email. Uh, we have, uh, like I just told you, uh, Gravity uh, Holdings from South Africa. We are determined to produce um, competent technicians, engineers in the field, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, you asked me the first questions, the importance of occupational health and safety. Mm -hmm. This one will also reduce the cost, the lost, or maybe they reduce the cost of accidents in the what? In the organizations. Mm -hmm. You know, the stress which normally comes with the work will be purely minimized you know it also reduces the accidents that normally occurs yeah, on site and reduce the insurance premiums or maybe uh, reduce uh, lower the insurance premiums that comes with work compensation you know? right so we can always have a dis this discussion outside here and um, I'll welcome guys to always visit our office um, as gravity group holdings companies we have partner uh, we have our partners in different countries like in Kenya we partners with six a safety consulting company and we offer a variety of working at height courses. All right. Yeah. As Gravity is certified by uh, CETA, IRATA, and Institute of Working at Height. All right. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much, Vic, for that. Now it's time we take uh, another very short break here on KUTV Primetime News in a moment. Shall be coming back with more. See you on the other side. <laughs>